ओके गाइस सो नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज एक्यूट लीवर फेलियर सो वट हैपन यू विल सी अ पेशेंट हु वॉज एब्सोलूटली फाइन बट विद इन फ्यू डेज ही इज हैविंग सिम्टम्स लाइक कागुलोपैथी देर इज सम सी एन एस मैनिफेस्टेशन सो दीज आर सम साइंस दैट वी से पेशेंट हैविंग एक्यूट लीवर फेलियर सो इफ आई से एक्यूट लीवर फेलियर मीन्स पेशेंट इज हैविंग सम लीवर डैमेज सो विच कैन बी ड्यू टू सर्टन ड्रग्स और इट कैन बी ड्यू टू सम वायरस और टॉक्सिन्स सो इफ आई से मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज most common cause of acute liver failure is toxin so most common cause is not any virus there are many patient who accidentally or intentionally force to the attempt they ingest uh, some kind of toxin so most common cause is toxin if i say most common viral cause most common viral cause and remember it is generally a uh, hepatitis d virus hepatitis d virus in combination with hepatitis b right so hdv plus hepatitis b virus infection this is more common if i say most common cause in pregnancy in pregnancy this is hepatitis e virus hepatitis e virus so based on duration based on duration what we can say suppose a patient is having liver failure in less than 7 days Or we have a, a second patient who who developed liver failure in a span of seven to twenty eight days. Or there is a third patient who develop uh, liver failure after a month or after twenty eight days. So based on this, uh, we can divide liver failure like this is what we call we call this uh, fulminant liver failure. We call this fulminant liver failure. If I say seven to twenty day twenty eight days, we call this sub fulminant. sub fulminant hepatic failure or sub fulminant liver failure and if i say more than or after 28 days we call this sub acute so liver failure it can be fulminant it can be sub fulminant it can be sub acute so based on duration so what you have to remember they can ask you is fulminant hepatic failure when you will call when it is less than 7 days so if i say uh, what are the causes what are other causes so let me just write here some important causes of liver failure so what are the causes of acute liver failure like i told you the most common cause most common cause these are your toxins so toxins are most common cause so if i say this toxin can be there can be different type of uh, toxin for example any drug in overdose can become a toxin so like i had a patient who because of failure in love he took excess dose of different tablet whatever he were he was having he took all the tablet uh, and later on he ended up with in love failure he developed hepatic failure right drug overdose so there can be some other toxin like uh, rat killer rat killer means chuhe marne wali dawa that is this rat killer this is having uh, zinc phosphide so many many patient they come after this if i say alcohol is also a mitochondrial toxin so alcohol excessive consumption of alcohol can be a cause so these are few toxin that you should remember then if i say if i talk about drugs especially uh, few drugs so understand this this uh, drugs uh, can cause damage to your liver uh, we call this dili dili means drug induced liver injury we call this drug induced liver injury dili so this uh, dili can be of two type like patient can have a liver damage in a dose dependent way so there can, there are certain drugs which damage to your body in a dose dependent fashion means only damage will occur when you when you take them in excess dose but there are some drugs they can cause liver failure even in single dose we call them dose independent so what are those drugs which can cause liver failure in a dose dependent fashion means when only whenever you take a higher dose of these things like your pcm paracetamol right uh, if i say mushroom poisoning is also an example of dose dependent then if i say there are certain drugs which can cause liver failure in dose independent fashion this include uh, drugs like your halothen halothen remember halothen it can lead to hepatitis 
then we have drugs like nitroforentoin nitroforentoin we use to treat uti it's an antibiotic if i say uh, ptu propyl thiouracil ptu that we use to treat hyperthyroidism that can cause then phenytoin phenytoin antipileptic drug even valproate can also cause valproate is a mood stabilizer also an antipileptic drug then if i if you have to remember one ATT called isoniazide isoniazide can be hepatotoxic so if i say what you have to remember remember pcm remember halothane this ask they ask the anesthesia question they can ask you isoniazide they can ask you almost all ATT are hepatotoxic isoniazide is also hepatotoxic then they can ask you phenytoin so these are few drugs which they frequently ask in exam then if i say what are other cause i told you it can be due to drugs it can be due to toxins then if i say it can be due to virus for virus remember hepatitis d virus is commoner than hepatitis e so if i say most common cause of acute liver failure is hepatitis d virus but in pregnancy if i ask the answer in pregnancy overall d is more common but in pregnancy e is more common In pregnancy, E is most common cause of hepatic failure. After virus, I can say sometimes suppose autoimmune hepatitis can also convert into hepatic failure. Autoimmune hepatitis can convert into hepatic failure. Then uh, there are uh, metabolic diseases like I can say your Wilson disease. I can say your Wilson disease, your hemochromatosis. If I say we have a disease that's affecting both the respiratory system and liver, that is your alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. And one question that they have asked in your exam is galactosemia. Galactosemia, remember, oil drop cataract. So these are few causes uh, which can lead to hepatic failure. Then understand is if I say, if I say, Overall, what is more common? Uh, this uh, drug and toxins are more common than virus, right? Overall, these are common cause. So, if I say how uh, this patient will present to you whenever you suspect acute liver failure, what will be the finding you will see? So, clinical features of the patient you will see. The patient will complain like uh, previously this patient was having a normal jaundice, but now you will notice there will be worsening of jaundice. There will be worsening of jaundice. So patient ka pilia badhte ja rahe. When you see the patient eyes, there will be a terrace. There will be a terrace, right? The more important thing is like which I'm writing point number three and four. Without this, uh, usually we don't define liver failure. These two are needed, right? So if I say the third feature which I'm writing is here is that is encephalopathy. There will be encephalopathy. So patient will have neurological changes. There will be encephalopathy, the patient can develop cerebral edema, there can be asterixis, there can be flapping tremors, we will have a separate video on encephalopathy, then uh, patient can develop other than encephalopathy, you will see your patient uh, can have coagulopathy, coagulopathies. So there will be CNS features, there will be coagulopathies like uh, PT, INR will be elevated, prothrombin time, international normalized ratio and APTT. They may be increased, right? They may be increased. Bleeding is usually not seen, but sometimes there can be bleeding, right? There can be bleeding. If I say what else you will notice, the patient will develop uh, encephalopathy. Along with this, you will see there will be symptoms of ammonia intoxication. There will be symptoms of ammonia intoxication. So understand this, these symptoms, they will start with uh, altered sleep, this patient will tell, like patient relative will tell you he is not sleeping from last three days. That is, there will be alteration of sleep. There will be alteration of sleep. There will be, patient can have alteration of sleep, there can be flapping tremor. These flapping tremor, we call them asterixis. Asterixis. Then ultimately understand this, the patient uh, can have a patient can develop damage to your different organs like there can be damage to heart so there can be cardiac manifestation 
so patient can develop arrhythmias there can be pulmonary manifestation so patient will complain shortness of breath and sometimes there can be manifestation in the kidney so there will be increase in uh, creatinine sometimes you will see increase in blood urea nitrogen ultimately i can say patient is having uh, some electrolyte imbalance also due to kidney involvement the patient can develop sepsis right so sepsis so when once patient is developing sepsis especially the sepsis is uh, initiating after pulmonary infection so this is i can say most common cause of death the so most common cause of death in patient will be due to sepsis so see what i told till now i told you till now most common cause most common cause of acute liver failure this will be a toxin sometime you can see uh, some virus like hepatitis d virus hepatitis b virus together even hepatitis d virus alone can also cause like uh, in pregnancy hepatitis e is more lethal based on days we can divide like 7 days less than 7 days fulminant 7 to 28 days uh, fulminant more than 28 days this, this will be subacute so most common cause i told you toxin so this case can be drug overdose it can be due to rat killer it can be due to alcohol sometime it can be due to certain drugs i told you drugs can damage your liver in two ways first is it can damage like in a dose dependent fashion second is it can damage in dose independent fashion then i can say virus hepatitis d hepatitis e virus can cause autoimmune hepatitis wilson disease hemochromatosis alpha 100% deficiency galactosemia so how we generally assume this so understand this uh, what they will give you in mcq says a patient is having worsening of jaundice decrease liver span bleeding tendency bleeding tendency means coagulopathy and hepatic encephalopathy so remember to make a diagnosis these two are needed along with liver you should have these two changes only then you will make a diagnosis of acute liver failure most common cause i told you toxin most common viral cause hepatitis d in pregnancy hepatitis c so this is a summary that you should take of hepatic failure these things we call them fhf fulminant hepatic failure when they are occurring in less than 7 days now if i say if i say how you will manage and how you will make a diagnosis so what will be the work up of this patient what are the tests you will recommend so if i say you will do a routine testing routine testing means cbc lft kft cbc patient can have sepsis so tlc total leukocyte count can increase you in, in lft you will see deranged liver enzymes deranged then that means ast alt alp may be increased then you can do a kft in kidney function test you can see there will be some damage to kidney as well then you should go for a chest x ray why chest x ray because patient can have shortness of breath one ecg is needed because there can be damage to heart as well damage to heart as well like patient is developing uh, sepsis uh, so we can also uh, check for sepsis marker although uh, nowadays we don't use these markers so we can go for esr we can go for crp or we can go for procalcitonin so these are marker for sepsis that we can check ultimately if i say what else we need to we need to check for pt aptt and inr so this point number 5 because there is a, there are patients who can develop coagulopathy so we need to patient can be at risk of bleeding so we need to do this test if i say later on the last thing i can check is serum ammonia so this time i'm highlighting these investigations are must serum ammonia pt aptt inr so these patients now you made a diagnosis serum ammonia will be elevated how you are going to treat so treatment understand the statement is uh, this is a patient it's a candidate of icu admission so first goal is you should stabilize the patient once you stabilize the patient uh, then what you will do now now you need to treat this so how we can treat this so if i say depending on the cause so if i say if if it is pcm toxicity if it is pcm toxicity so then remember if i say if i say like uh, uh, 7 to 8 gram is the toxic dose of pcm so this time writing 7 to 8 gram means i can say like if i say if i say one tablet is 500 mg right so around 500 650 mg we have two doses of pcm so like 15 to 12 to 15 tablet is toxic dose 
in healthy adult in healthy adults but remember toxicity can occur even at a lower doses like uh, in alcoholics in children so in children alcoholic even 3 to 4 gram can cause severe toxicity so whenever you suspect pcm toxicity then treatment is done by the drug of choice will be n acetylcysteine nac n acetylcysteine n acetylcysteine is drug of choice right uh, alternative to this we can use methionine so this is the doc second drug that we can use is methionine clear if i say if i say if cause is not pcm toxicity then what we should do then the treatment is supportive so if i say then what you will give you will give lactulose so lactulose like this is your uh, non absorbable sugar that we give to patient and this is like non absorbable so so patient will have constipation is one of the trigger for this so we should give lactulose in every patient so what we give we can give like 30 to 45 ml 3 to 4 times a day along with this we can give some non absorbable antibiotic like rifaximin rifaximin so rifaximin you can give either 550 bd 550 mg twice a day or it's also available in 400 mg so we can give 400 mg thrice a day right so rifaximin we can give lactulose we can give suppose patient is not having uh, lactulose or alternative to this we can give lactitol lactitol patient is still not having uh, stool patient is not passing stool then we can go for anema right if there is bleeding or i can say pt inr is deranged patient is having bleeding then we should give ffp fresh frozen plasma is given if patient is having bleeding then all patient like uh, they may have uh, low blood pressure they are not eating and then so we should give iv fluid right and if i say the last thing what i can use here is lola lola is your l ornithin l aspartate l ornithin l aspartate so this uh, drug we use in hepatic encephalopathy in acute liver failure sometimes we also use this in 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 cld patient so lola we can use ultimately if i say last option if everything is fail nothing is working then what we can do liver transplant so we have so many treatment option if i ask you definitive treatment definitive treatment is going to be your liver transplant so definitive treatment liver transplant and if i ask you out of so many investigation if you want to choose single investigation of choice this will be your serum ammonia this will be your serum ammonia so remember basically in liver failure that the what you have to remember is the causes uh, pcm poisoning they ask question the antidote they ask uh, an acyl system i told you this is also the this is also used in treatment of cystic fibrosis and acetylcysteine it is basically a mucolytic drug and this is also used to prevent it is used to prevent i can say contrast induced nephropathy contrast induced nephropathy it is used to prevent contrast induced nephropathy so this is uh, how we manage acute liver failure i hope uh, you enjoyed the video see you in the next video with some more information thank you so much bye bye